Hello, everyone. I'm Brennan Marcello, sitting digitally across the internet from Michael Nyslick. Uh This is the Auburn Undercover Podcast, presented by WeHaveDonuts.com, D-O-U-G-H, Nuts.com. They deliver donuts to Birmingham and even to Prevail Union coffee shops in Montgomery and Auburn. Gourmet donuts, beautiful donuts. They even sell wall donuts. Go to WeHaveDonuts.com for more information. They're a proud sponsor of the Auburn Undercover Podcast. Uh, Michael, is uh, everybody in your home still sequestered? Yeah, yeah. No, it's not great. By the way, I, I looked up exactly what this virus is you're talking about. It's just a cold, right? Essentially, but it's contagious, and you could test positive for it. So Test positive? What? what? Yeah, I guess. And they take a swab of like, your snot, I guess, and uh, that's that's how <clears throat> the little one was diagnosed. So it's bad. It's really bad. Do you have AIDS? <laughs> this sounds like they take a swab. Yeah, that's bad. Um, okay. Well, I thought it was just a cold virus, but it, it is a cold virus. But it's a bad. It's not. It's not good. It's not. It's it's the bad kind of cold. Yeah, it's not a good one. I don't know. What that you means. know, like when the you know like, like a good one where you get kind of sick one day and you kind of sleep it off. Yeah. It, this is not. There's no sleeping it off. No. Uh, well, maybe that's what I had in uh, the Sugar Bowl. I don't know. It's possible. That's, that's, it is possible. Um. So there you go. <laughs> that's the podcast. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody, or happy post-Thanksgiving if you're listening to this on Friday or Saturday morning. We're we're recording this on a late Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Um. So yeah. Uh, you know what they call Thanksgiving in uh, journalism? Thursday. Thursday, yes. Work day. Um, well, the Iron Bowl is Saturday. I don't know if you've heard this, Michael. Um, there's a game between, I believe, Auburn and... Uh, let me look up the other opponent here. Uh, Alabama. Alabama. The number one team in the nation, according to the polls. Uh, Auburn, Alabama, the Iron Bowl. Uh, winner goes to the SEC championship game. Enough said, I guess, right? Um, but both teams dealing with injuries. Auburn, as we've mentioned, and as you guys have read at AuburnUndercover.com, six players injured uh, in the ULM game. Three or four of them returned to the field. But uh, to me, the two big injuries for Auburn going into this game are Jeremiah Denson, the defensive back who had a concussion, um, which I just see it's hard to believe for him to come back after a week from a concussion. And then yeah, um, Gus, Gus was not happy that I asked if it was a concussion. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're loath to admit it, but, um, uh, like you said, four days is just not enough time. Usually, uh, now with the protocols they have in place, um, to get back. Yeah. That's not something you can just, you know, give someone a shot and it gets better. Right, um, like the rhino virus or whatever. You or they could, or you know, you could play through it and just take chances because they're not allowed. You know, nope. some, yeah, it's not like a hamstring where you have to. You know, you can't play after this. So uh, tough for him, though. Tough situation. Now we're talking brain damage here. That's it's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, and then of course, uh, Trey Williams, the linebacker, uh, our intern Will actually did a pretty good piece on. Uh, this week about how much different the the run defense has been when Trey Williams is in there and when he's not, and I was very surprised by that. I don't maybe it's just a coincidence, but the numbers obviously show that they're much better against the run with Trey Williams in there. I, I, that was very surprising to me when I saw that and read that article. Um, yeah, so good good work by him. So I, I I would think you know if all those players are injured, dinged up, those are the two that are probably going to miss the game. Um, and that's those are two big pieces, Mike. Well, I think Denson, I mean, we've kind of touched on this too, just what he brings uh, and their depth at that position. You're now an injury away from really having to shuffle things around. Um, does Jordan Peters get more playing time? Does it go to Javaris Davis? Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that secondary with Denson out because he had really played a lot in the last couple of weeks when he was healthy. Yeah, um, obviously with Javaris Davis, they can move him around and uh... – Beyond that, ooh, man, things get thin. Um, right. And then Alabama's, of course, been dealing with injured players. Uh, the big thing there is some injured players return to practice, but they were wearing the black non-contact jerseys at Alabama. Alabama has 
open practice throughout the season, at least for like the first 15 minutes. So you could see who's yeah. injured and who's not. Auburn does not do that. And Nick Saban was still go- kind of going along with, you know, just because they're out there doesn't mean they're going to play. And he said that these guys are mature enough to realize that, you know, if you're not physically ready to go 100%, you're not going to play. Um, so it Alabama. Sounds like, uh, Fitzpatrick's going to play. Yeah. Uh, Minka they're... Fitzpatrick. Yeah. They had a couple. They have some linebackers that were out from the beginning of the season. They're back in practice just now. They were out since week one. It'd be hard to see them play. Yeah, that's the thing. Even if they were yeah. healthy, like how do you what throw someone out there after eleven weeks? Their left guard Ross still can't pronounce his last name. It's probably doubtful. But their place kicker apparently is injured, uh, and he was held out of the Mercer game with an unspecified pulled muscle, um, and he sounds like he might be doubtful. Uh, and I guess J.K. Scott would kick field goals if he is out. That's interesting. So, and it's like, his name's Andy Papanastos or something. Oh, yes, like yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, how's your name, Andy? But that would be a, uh interesting wrinkle considering the history with field goals in this series. Yeah, in this series, you know, going back to the beginning of the series, really. Um, there's been a lot of games that have come down to a field goal or a missed field right. goal at some point. And, and so... Uh, and J.K. Scott's like the best punter in the entire country, by the way. And right. now he might have to pull double duty as a place kicker. Right. And, you know, they're probably he can do a little bit, but not what you want to have going into the biggest game of the season. Yeah. And then you got to worry about leg fatigue. Um, right. That's that's why a guy like uh, Daniel Carlson, for example, even when Aiden Marshall has struggled off and on this season, they have not pulled the trigger and said, hey, Daniel, handle the punting and kicking duties as you did as a redshirt freshman in 2014. They fell off from that. And uh, it'd be interesting if Alabama has to go with J.K. Scott doing some place kicking uh, duties. I wonder if they would uh, put him out on the field to try a 57-yard field goal with no time remaining. Well, it, it, I think it comes down to what if they're sort of on the verge of field goal range normally, but you're not so confident. Do you just everything four downs until you get much closer now? That would be something. Um, but I, I think it makes more sense when you have a pretty good offense. Uh, why risk it? You know, why why give away three points? Why not try if it's a short? It could make for some interesting coaching decisions in that sort of, <coughs> excuse me, uh, nether region of like, you know, 45, 35 yard line. What do they do? What's their strategy? The nether region? The nether regions. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're right outside the, uh, the field goal range. Oh, he kicked that one from the nether regions. Yeah, the nether regions. Uh, well, apparently the kicker has a, a muscle injury from, of some from nether the nether region. regions. Yeah, yeah. So, uh. <laughs> but that's a, yeah, that's a one to watch, I think. For, that's for interesting. Sure for I, yeah, I did not think about that with special teams. Special teams is going to be a big factor in this game, I think. Yeah, and that's. I mean, you you asked him about it, and he paused when he was asked about the kickoff coverage, as if to say, like, "Man, we stink." He literally paused, like he, someone hit the pause button on him. Cause yeah, because he's, he's, he's a robot. Could, but he took five good, good five ten seconds to figure out what he wanted to say because their kick return coverage is terrible. I mean, he was really going. No he was going through his. He was going through his answer prompts. Yeah. But I mean, there's really no other way to say. It. I think what what's the other Middle Tennessee State's the only team worse right now th- this year. Yeah. It's bad for Auburn. It's surprisingly bad. You figure they well, figure they've got out. all those athletes, and you figure, yeah, uh, why wouldn't they be good? Um, not great. Not Middle great. Tennessee. Middle Tennessee. Yeah. Not great, Bob. Yeah. So that's kind of the injury update that we've got for you. It's the last you're going to hear about injuries unless we talk to some sources or something like that. Till the game, really. Um, like I said, Thanksgiving's Thursday. I don't know what Alabama's plans are, but Auburn's plans usually on Thursdays they practice in the morning, through. do like a walkthrough type thing, yeah, and then they let them go for the evening and afternoon to go have dinner if they have family close by, or they go to coaches' houses and have uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Then they come back to campus like at nine o'clock or eight o'clock and go to bed, and then wake up to the Friday and go to meetings. And do they still go to Montgomery for this last game too? I'm pretty sure, yeah. No. I think they always do that. Get away from everything, because man, I mean, town's gonna be nuts Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, town is dead right now. Uh, uh, I think I can count on one hand how many times I've driven down to Tumor's Corner and been able to park right there at the corner without circling. And today yeah. was one of those days. Uh, there's no traffic; everybody's gone. But it, this place will look like a bustling metropolis Friday. It's gonna be packed. Um, so 
go into this game, you know, some would say that there's some, uh, you know, obviously there's rumors about Gus Malzahn, and some will say it's distraction. I've seen some people say that these Gus Malzahn to Arkansas rumors uh, are creations from Tuscaloosa. To... Plants. They're planting things to distract <laughs> yeah. the team. I was asked on the radio Wednesday, like, hey, so-and-so mentioned that this could be coming from Alabama. And it's funny how this all comes up for Alabama week. And I paused, and I was like, I don't want to say anything mean. But I was like, you know, this started coming up after he beat Georgia, not because Alabama was on the schedule. Uh, and it just so happened that the Gus Malzahn Arkansas rumors started when he beat number one Georgia and Brett Bielema lost to Mississippi State on the same weekend. And it became clear at that point that Mrs. Or excuse me, Arkansas is not going to make a bowl game, and there he's going to be fired. So uh, that's the timing reason for why the the, the discussion or not discussion or the rumors started popping up. Then it didn't like it popped up this week. It popped up a week and a half ago. Um, well, and just the time. I mean, for Gus, it makes sense to at least if he loses this game, reset the clock. Uh, if you get a good five year deal. Um, you don't have to worry about your job right away. Um, I think that's where you could kind of see why he wouldn't think about it possibly, but that's only if they lose. Maybe, yeah, yeah, sure, certainly. I mean, he he'll have something to think about. I here's I, you know I don't <clears throat> like I said, I've talked to people and Tuesday and then again a little bit Wednesday. My understanding. As it is now, and I've said this from the beginning, and then it was reinforced once again. All right, there's about like a third of the boosters and the fans that want Gus Malzahn at Arkansas. It's not like a lot of boosters, yeah. Yeah. Um, And it's coming from mostly from Northwest Arkansas, and then the Central Arkansas folks are kind of pulling the different a different way. And the name I was told Wednesday that makes more sense to them, and that they would probably actually go after. Uh, based off what they're hearing, it's Mike Nor- Mike Norvell at Memphis. Um, hmm. He's an Arkansas guy. He went to UCA Central Arkansas, and uh, it was mentioned again to me today that that could be a possibility. I'll also say this. I've talked to people uh, at, at Arkansas uh, that are around it, the program, but also those who cover it, and one person straight up told me they have no idea where this Gus Malzahn's talk is coming from. Um, Weird. Yeah, so I found that very strange. Arkansas is in a spot where they don't have an AD yet. Just like Auburn, they just formed a search committee uh, for the new athletics director. Um, They have an interim athletics director in right now, but it's not known how they'll handle a coaching search because, one, they haven't fired Brett Bielema yet. Now, that'll probably happen Saturday morning after the Missouri game. Yeah, that's more of a That's a formality out of all the stuff. Right. But But my question is, is the interim AD, like, already have people in mind? He and has who, a green light to hire somebody. That seems strange. And who's that's what I'm saying. Like, and but who's actually handling it? Who's going to handle this? Right. Uh, the rumor that is being reported or bandied about out there is that Gus Malzahn, if he decided to go to Arkansas, would have a hand in picking the AD, which just sounds ludicrous to me. Why would you allow someone to pick their boss? Sounds weird. I mean, but that would be certainly something maybe that gets them to think about it, right? Sure, but what would Gus think? I mean, Gus doesn't know any ads out there. He'd like <laughs> Gus's Chris, whole thing Christy is could, just leave me Christy alone. Christie could pitch in, right? Christie could be the ad. Christie yeah. Malzahn, athletics director. Yeah, um, so um, I don't no, know. But I just think it, I, it just makes sense. And the, the, like, if they were to kick the tires, and he was, I, I mean, I could see him kicking the tires. I, sure. I, that's how I kind of refer to it. If I was and, Arkansas, I would too. And you get for him, it gives you leverage in case you want to yes. maybe, you know, get a little bit of a, what do you call it? A, a little bit of money? Yeah. Some well, extra per diem. Well, my understanding is President Stephen Lee here at Auburn really likes Gus and likes him even more after they beat number one, Georgia. I would think he's going to get a contract extension of some sort. The question is, would you if, get, if, they how lost, quick... would, if they lost, would you give him a contract extension? Was his deal's good through what two thousand twenty right now? Yeah, I'd extend it a year and I give him a raise. You'd extend it a year, give him. Why would you just give him a raise? Why would you extend it a year? I would ex- well because it shows to four year recruits that you know, quote unquote, the guy will be here four years. I guess, but you I, know mean, what I mean, I just, 
I, I would and I would raise him to like five point seven. I give him a million dollar raise per year. And I, I mean, it's not like he's contract. got. He's not like suitors banging down the door here. Don't well, Arkansas. If yourself. Arkansas does come calling, I guarantee you they'll offer like six mil. Yeah. But the question not, is, I mean, what if Arkansas comes in and offers some ridiculous contract, like seven million eight years? You let that. You let him go. I think. Um, because I don't believe Arkansas is limited by state law, like how long the contract can uh, last. That's an Alabama thing. Um, no. Oh, just there are certain states. But certain states, like Mississippi, for example, you couldn't. I got um, you. But Arkansas, I believe, if I recall, like it's one, it's a, one of those states where they, yeah, you, know, you get you get a ridiculous contract if you want. So he could get Jim Harbaugh's lifetime contract. Yeah, whatever. how about that? That's silly. Um, but uh, I, guys, I, I don't know what to think of it. The, the, but some of the reports I've read. Are just so weird and the one about the coach's friend. I mean, yeah. that was that one had red flashing lights. It's like Gus doesn't talk to anybody, and <laughs> yeah, I, I you know not to be uh, mean about it. It's just that he he even admits he doesn't have yeah. He's got a very his, tight circle, and he doesn't have like a he's not a coach's guy that like kind of does that kind of stuff. And guess so. what? He's hasn't been doing the last two weeks talking to people because yeah, he's so. been really focused on the Iron Bowl. That one was a little strange, just like, I mean, I could see how it'd be maybe idle chatter around the profession, but not that he's an issue sure. with people that know him. The, yeah, you know, you know like, how that read to me? You know how, like, when something happens and, like, an analyst says that, hey, Auburn's going to be a playoff team. You know, like, Kirk Herbstreit right. says this. It's like they took that and just said, well, the talk in the profession is that Gus will leave for Arkansas. Or well, it's well, like telephone where the original message might have been slightly different. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Well, how about a report that says people close to Gus Malzahn say this or that? We haven't seen that yet. No, no. I'll say this. People close to Gus Malzahn are not talking. About they rarely it. do. And right. there aren't very many of them. So, uh, <laughs> But it's not. It's just true. He keeps his circle club. It's not more. It's not an insult. It's just that's how he operates. You know, it's just yep. that's how he goes about business. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see, folks. I. I if I had to make a prediction right now, I'd say he's staying just because one or there's a couple of reasons in my eye, uh, mind's eye for Gus Malzahn. Gus Malzahn's ultra competitive. I don't think he would want to be labeled as a guy that ran away from Nick Saban to go to Arkansas where sure he's going to coach against Nick Saban every year, but you're not, it's not your rival, you know, and you're not expected to beat Alabama every year. And then you have to face Auburn every year and deal with that storyline over Who is Arkansas's rival? Is that a dumb question? No, it's not a dumb question because they don't really have one. The SEC tried to build one with LSU. They gave them a trophy called the boot. And then now they're doing one with Mizzou, which, of course, just came from the Big 12. They never played. Right. Um, where they call it the battle line or whatever it is. Is that trophy. who they're playing this weekend? Yeah, that's that who they're playing around? Friday. Okay. Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, they're playing. But they never had one before Missouri came in, like – no, it was LSU, but it was, and they had some LSU and Arkansas have had good games, but it's never really been a rivalry. Auburn, so they, uh, Arkansas still have the boot. Yeah, LSU's got it now. Uh-huh. Yeah, they they still do that, but um, you know, Arkansas's only rival they ever really had was Texas, and goodness, right, that was uh twenty five years ago now. So yeah, this is those teams see. wouldn't want to play each other anymore anyway. So. Yeah, so I I I just, I just don't know what to make of this the chatter. And people are going, well, it's got to be, it's being, it's propaganda. It's all coming from uh, Tuscaloosa. No, it really is coming from Fayetteville, from from Arkansas. Yeah, uh, they could have interest, and probably Gus isn't sort of saying no, you know, yet. Um, his age, if his agent is smart, his agent hasn't even mentioned it to Gus yet. Right. Because he's, the longer you wait, the hotter you become, and the more the agent can work the lines. You, you let that fester and see where, you know, how much money they're going to say. Yep. So anyway, we need agents. Um. So I, you know, is it a distraction? I don't think so. No, I, I don't see how it is. And anybody who's trying to prop that up as a distraction, as a storyline this week, don't don't listen to it. That's so silly. It's it's the laziest storyline to go on. Well, Alabama's trying to freak them out, or you know, this is a distraction in the locker room. Players don't give a crap. Coaches don't no. give a crap. So, no. 
And we had a report, and I'm not going to mention the name because you have to be a subscriber to go see it at auburnundercover.com in our, on our message board. There's an assistant coach right now at Auburn that's expressed interest in a head coaching job somewhere. So this stuff happens. It's, not, the, Cody. it it's happen- not Cody Burns. It's not Cody Burns. It happens at the end of every year. If your team is good, your coaches will be and You want that items. to happen because exactly. otherwise your coaches are not good and nobody wants them, and that's not a great spot to be in. <laughs> exactly. So, so, but I think the difference here with Malzahn, as he mentioned, is one week I'm getting fired, one week I'm leaving for somewhere, and maybe that's maybe that makes him mad. Maybe that he doesn't like that, but who knows? Maybe but, that's why. He leaves. But just you know, the fan base ain't, is, you know, it's going to be a weird off season when if if they fit, well, it would be nine and three, and then you lose to Alabama for a fourth straight year. Um, there'll probably be some fans that aren't completely thrilled with that finish. No, and, and, and people on our message board, the body get have even said that. So, yeah, I could, I mean, I get it. I get why he'd have, sure. you know, that's tough. There's not a lot of, like you said, that when we talked about it all year, there's no margin for error here, you know. But they did beat number one Georgia, and that's a rival. And Georgia is a legit top 10 team. They are. So, and they blew them out. I think fans should be happy, no matter, unless they get really blown out by Alabama. That won't set well, but, uh, who knows? All right, let's uh let's change gears here to basketball before we get into like predictions and key right. players. So people stick around to the end of the podcast. Um, basketball host uh, Winthrop Friday. Uh, Charles sure. Barkley's fake statue will be unveiled Saturday morning. Yeah, it's a replica of the real thing, which isn't ready, which will be ready in some time, unspecified time in spring. That they won't reveal, and that's how things go here. Is it like a fake statue, like a like a cartoon statue, where if you take a pin to it and hit it, it'll just deflate? <laughs> they had it wrapped in plastic, and so, but apparently, since you could tell the outline of the statue, they needed to cover it in a cloth. Uh, it's ridiculous, um, but <laughs> so it's buried beneath a bunch of stuff right now. So nice. Yeah, they're honoring him Friday at the game. And then uh, Saturday morning, they're going to unveil the statue. Will he coach the game? <laughs> they might. I don't maybe. I, I, as of right now, no. It looks like Bruce Pearl still going to be the coach as of Friday. <laughs> All right. And that's a nice segue to, uh, goodness gracious, everything crazy is happening with basketball. Uh, Y'all know about the FBI investigation. Y'all know about the internal investigation that's going on. Well, we reported Auburn undercover over here the last week or so, or I guess a few days that uh, uh, Bruce Pearls refused to cooperate, um, and by cooperate, I mean speak to investigators and Stephen Leith, the president, uh, about the internal investigation. And it's rubbed Stephen Leith the wrong way. And some folks on our message board earlier this week posted a supposed email from Stephen Leith to fan a fan and uh, a couple fans. And, and, you know, everybody's like, well, that's not real, that's not real. Well... Auburn just straight up came out and said Wednesday. No, that's a real email. That's what Stephen Leith said. And the gist of it, well, not the gist of it. I'll just read like a couple of notes for you. You all right? Did you see your microphone? I did. Uh, he straight up says, quote, having three of his employees suspended or terminated is troublesome at best. His unwillingness to even talk to me about it is particularly troublesome. In addition, I have many more facts than the fans, and rest assured that I'll make any decision based on facts, what is best for Auburn, and not on emotion or perceptions from the past. Unquote. I'll, I'll admit, I read that and I was like, there's 0% chance that's real. I, I did too. A lot of people thought that on the board. Um, then I was, told by, I was told by someone that, no, that's a, I got a similar email. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. But sure enough. Uh, Troublesome at best does not make sense. It's troublesome at worst, right? Listen, we're not going to get into grammar here. I, no, I'm not grammar, but what's <laughs> troublesome, what does troublesome at best mean? Well, it means that the best case scenario is, is it that it's horrible. <laughs> what is, what's understand. the worst case scenario? Uh, it, they get rid of the basketball program, maybe? I don't, I don't I just know. Didn't understand. Uh, well, so yeah. there's that. Because, and, and like the other email that somebody had gotten, it was at the bottom. It said "sent from an iPad," and I just I can't. <laughs> Who sends emails from iPads now? Well, it's just that a president of the university is just sitting on his iPad, just shouting out emails 
um, when he won't answer a single question about the situation and cites privacy concerns and uh, FBI investigation with the media. But he's like, here's some details. To f-. So if we had emailed him as fans, he, we could have gotten answers to questions. I honestly thought about doing that, going, hey, Mr. President. <laughs> I'm a concerned. My well, name, <laughs> my name's Billy, and I'm a yeah. I'm just a 12 year old basketball fan, and I want to hang know. up. I'll hang up and listen. And it's like listen. I don't understand. Um, well, the email sent from the iPad. I'm sure he just had something copy and pasted. He just got copy paste, copy paste. Hey, but but <laughs> such a strange. This is a strange development. I think. Well, that, the fans uh, don't really like it. Well, and you know, Pearl's been very. Uh, he's tried to keep this in house, uh, uncomfortably right. so. To the point where, you know, he's just sort of kind of like today, it was trust the process. We're doing, you know, we're, this is a process. This is a process. Um, and now you got Stephen Leith emailing pe- fans and saying Pearl's basically really calling him out. Um, and this bizarre. is an email. And this is an email he sent out this week, too. Yeah. This, this yeah, isn't this something for like two or three, three months ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. This was this was this week. So uh, and yeah, Bruce Pearl had a press conference today and wouldn't answer any questions and grew very frustrated about it. Uh, basically cut off the question and said, we're, he, we're, we're, let's talk about basketball and just start talking about basketball. Um, well, they, ha- they, uh, yeah. they have no answers and they haven't had any, they don't have any answers about Wiley or Purifoy at this point. Um, and he's unwilling to say, what is there a timeline for when, you know, at what point does this internal investigation finish or when can they turn the page? And what we're, we're approaching 62 months, basically two full months. And there's almost no... said, I thought you said 62 months. Wow. No, 60 Five days, two, two full months. You know, that's a long time. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a significant amount of time. And you're a month into the season now too. Uh, and that's, I think what gets lost a little bit is you're really Stephen Leith or whoever's kind of driving. This is torpedoing the season a little bit. I mean, these kids are, this can't be fun. Uh, no, uh, certainly not. And I was told Tuesday morning that Bruce Pearl had like till noon on Tuesday mm-hmm. to meet with Stephen Leith about something. Uh, I'm told it didn't really necessarily happen, though there may have been a small discussion. And then both sides kind of clamored down again or went back down again. But it was like the third or fourth time Bruce has been kind of given an ultimatum to talk. Right. And it hasn't happened. So. Bruce keeps calling him on the bluff and Stephen Leith's not looking all that great in the process. Cause how many more times are you going to threaten this guy before you actually do something? If you're going to keep threatening him and I Bruce is calling him out. The, the urgency for what, what has transpired makes little sense. Um, it's something that has had to have come up in that line that Stephen Leith says in there that I have more facts than the fans yeah. is interesting. Well, and then the other side of it, we you know spoke with Frankie Sullivan's lawyer, uh, and they're not sharing those facts with even them, and they're obligated um, by various handbooks and rule books to provide reasons why there's a suspension, uh, reason why there's discipline, um, and they have not provided them to Frankie Sullivan. All they've said it's related to the ongoing investigation and are refusing to provide any sort of details. Uh, and this, the, the lawyer I talked to for Frankie had practiced 32 years and had never seen anything like that. Um, and they're still waiting. They've sent multiple letters requesting the information in the last two weeks and nothing. I've heard nothing. I mean, no, are, no, no response. Are they just wanting to frustrate them so much that they just like up and quit or they continue well, to Frankie's, do this and they fire them? I mean, I don't Frankie's salary, salary is peanuts for Auburn. Right. Uh, but I don't like these are scorched earth tactics. Like Frankie's really well liked in that program and yes. by the fan base. The fan base uh, yeah. I don't know why you'd sort of do that to one. You know, you talk about Auburn family and they always kind of say one of our own or, you know, us and we and all that. Um, the way they're kind of going about it. Uh, very strange. Uh, I would say strange at best. Strange at best. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I could not believe it. You just don't picture, I mean, look, they're people, I guess, but the university president, you probably, you wouldn't expect him to be talking about legal matters to fans. I'll I just, you, I, yeah. I, I don't understand that. We're all human beings and boy, do we, we make mistakes. And I, you know, I, I wonder if he sent some of these emails. Um, frustration or something? And, well, no, uh, to, to top tier boosters and mm. thought maybe it wouldn't get out. But that's. 
I un- I agree. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're a, if you're an administrator, that's concerning. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, but, but, but um, President Stephen you? Leith has had issues before at Iowa State, remember, with the private a, airplane. This is a fairly major crisis, and I think you can kind of oh, see, yes. you, you see leadership and things. Would this be concerning to you as a Auburn booster, as a fan, as somebody in faculty that – yeah. Well, how are they handling this is pretty yes. embarrassing. I would it concern me a lot uh, because because look, this is basketball. If this was football, I mean, the world would be on fire. Uh, but well, you, that's that's the thing. Some people are worried about is that this could bleed over to something was, else. Right. That's what I'm asking. Like, if this this is how he's going to handle a football controversy, like, wouldn't you be panicking if you were somebody <laughs> with with ties to the program? I just think that. Um, they better figure things out quickly or this could really, I mean, it's going to listen. Um, there's if, no good ending. I mean, no, listen. there's no good ending to do it. And if Bruce Pearl gets fired, I predict scorched earth. That's my prediction. Well, the program's already set back years by this. I mean, if they fire him and get some interim coach that hasn't coached in a decade or whatever it is. Well, and, and in the immediate future right now, I mean, recruiting's dead right now. Completely. I mean, they them. weren't recruiting for the 2018 class anyway, but you're talking a lot of these teams are already getting commits for 2019. You're laying that groundwork. It doesn't stop, you know. Um, it's not good. I agree. And the and the kids, eventually, you're going to get kids leaving if this continues. Yeah, at the end of the season. Yeah, because why do you want to be a part of this? I mean, it'll be interesting to see what Charles Barkley says if they do let him talk to the media. Oh God! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh man! You're gonna be there for that, right? Yeah, they said that they're they're tra- you know Charles' schedule's so busy. We're not sure if he'll be available. Oh, sure. I read that as like, yeah, you don't want to put a microphone in front of him. You guys are scared to death of what he'll say. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you agree that yeah. they don't want they don't want any part of that? Well, because he go out there and speak the truth. Because he's Charles Barkley, man, and he donates enough money where they're 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 gonna keep cashing his checks. Oh they, yeah, they're not gonna get mad. <laughs> he's a member of the Diamond Club, or I don't know what their names are, but he's at the top tier, I think. Yeah, he's there. He loves his. He loves Auburn. Yeah, he and he shows it. Um, crazy times, but Auburn uh, has a basketball game Friday, and Charles Barkley will be there. Um, mm-hmm. Hint, hint. Maybe you can catch him Friday. Um, so we'll see. Um, but. Uh, I was told that Bruce is safe this week. Next week's a new week. They're all new weeks, right? It may be new. Yeah. Every week's different. Um, okay. Before we get into key players and predictions for the Iron Bowl, let's go ahead and do listener questions. Let's start off here on the Twitter machine. Let's get that all riled up. Uh, Auburn Rants asks, what is your favorite side on Thanksgiving? Uh, I have no idea. I'm not a big Thanksgiving guy. That's awful. I'm going to say broccoli and cheese casserole. It's pretty good. Sure. Uh, This goes along with basketball. Matt asks, Does Austin, do Austin Wiley and Daniel Purifoy make it back this season? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, you know, look, there's stuff coming out of Wiley's camp that he's close, but there's been no movement officially, and I don't know. I, I think anybody that says they know is, you know, there's no, I don't, is there a guarantee? No. No. Right? I, I, I don't think anybody can predict that. A lot of people close to Wiley think he's going to be uh, eligible or whatever you want to call it at some point, but I think everybody's just wishful thinking right now, to be honest. But I, I don't know. Who knows? All right. Uh, CB3 asks, um, do you think Stephen Leith is supportive of Gus Malzahn and the potential contract extension he has potentially earned? I'll hang up and listen. Yeah, we hit on this a little bit. I think Stephen Leith is a big supporter of Gus Malzahn. They'll try to work something out. Yeah, um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if they wait for the AD, if they do it. Like, if they beat Alabama, maybe they move right away. Maybe if they don't, they wait for the new AD. Like, he lets him or her, her handle it. But yeah. Ted asks, is there someone from within the athletics department that is jockeying for a promotion from within to be athletics director? Do you think it's even a realistic realistic possibility? And then Ted ad- adds, I hope not. Uh, yeah. I don't think so, no. 
I don't think so. Um, ooh, this is an upside down reference. Auburn Tweep asks, is this Gus Malzahn, Arkansas situation the upside down of the 2003 Jetgate story? Instead of Auburn firing the coach and making a deal with a new coach, the coach is potentially, quote, firing Auburn and making a deal with new school. Both situations get resolved amicably with Auburn win and Iron Bowl, too. That's a interesting uh, juxtaposition there. Uh, that Maybe a little bit, sure. But we don't know how serious Arkansas is at this moment, so I, I don't know. Right. Uh, Jimmy Odom asks, why won't we throw to Nate Craig Myers? He seems to catch when we do. Uh, it's the greatest mystery of all. He's a good he's a good pass blocker. I can tell you that. He plays a lot of snaps, right? He, he does. Has snap count, so, yeah, he's uh, right up he's there at the, the top. Field. It's not like he's sitting on the bench waiting to get in the game. So that makes it even more strange that he's playing, but still nothing. That makes it a stranger thing. Hey, Amy go. Jones asks, better facial hair, your beard, I guess they're referring to me, or Henry Cavill's mustache? <laughs> what was the wait, what was the question? Better facial hair, Brandon's beard or Henry Cavill's mustache? Cavill, Cavill, whatever his name is. Uh, Superman. His digitally removed mustache. Oh, yeah, I'd say his digitally off, removed. Yeah. Somewhere there is a digitally removed mustache floating around on a hard drive, and someone's animated it and made it into like a talking uh, uh, 3D thing. I want to see it. Um, what's your take on the Auburn offensive line? This is from Matt Mathis. What's your take on the Auburn offensive line versus the Alabama defensive line and vice versa? Who wins on each side and why? Uh, it might be a stalemate, but I do want to say that maybe Alabama's defensive line – can be taken advantage of by uh, Auburn's offensive line and the way it's playing right now. But we'll see. Uh, worried, and, and Gus is worried about pressure, them not just using the line. Yeah. They'll bring in extra guys. He too. has mentioned that several times that, that Alabama's going to blitz. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Pruitt, the uh, <clears throat> defensive coordinator of Alabama, he's 4-0 and against Auburn as a coordinator, by the way. Yeah. Jonathan Weaver asks, what's the pregame, pregame atmosphere like on the planes? It's very, very quiet right now, but Friday it will get ramped up. It is very quiet. Classes are out. Mitchell Cox uh, asks, could Jimbo Fisher be a replacement if Gus Malzahn leaves? Sure, if uh, Texas A&M doesn't hire him first. Um, this isn't really a question, but someone says, I feel like this is a breakout game for Nate Craig Myers. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> um let's see okay mitsubishi miller asks what bowl will auburn go to if auburn loses the iron bowl uh i think it's still possible they go to a new year's six bowl don't you uh yeah i think it's one of the three i think you had we're on the board today talking about it. peach what citrus and uh what's orange. the orange orange yeah or even or citrus not a new year's six bowl but uh Peach Fiesta or Orange Fiesta, are possible. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think. And Citrus possible. look appears right now to be the worst case scenario for them. And Citrus is the top tier bowl outside the New Year's Six for the SEC, so to speak. Yeah. Either way, they're going to a you know a game on or near January first. Um, so that's it for listener questions. We got quite a few on a late Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Yeah. We tweeted it out like twenty minutes ago. Got a lot of a lot of responses. Okay. All right. It's prediction time, but before we get to predictions, uh, let's get to key players. Name me a player or two, Mike, that you think has to have they have to have a really good game for Auburn to win this. For Iron Auburn, Man. I think Carryon Johnson has to have a really, really good game. I think it's going to fall on his shoulders. Uh, he's going to have to make it happen. I think at times, and he has, especially in the second half of games. Um, I think you're looking at 35 to 40 carries here. Uh, if they're going to win the game, and he's and he, it's going to fall on him. Wow, forty to forty-five. Uh, wow. No, thirty for thirty-five. Oh, to 40. okay. I 35. thought you said forty to forty-five. Like, forty-five to forty-five. Oh, man, that'd be on, on something else. Um, and then I think one of the receivers has got to have a big game. Uh, Alabama hasn't allowed a pass over fifty yards a season. Darius Slayton's got to get open, or Ryan Davis break one of those bubble screens for a big game like he's been doing. That's kind of I think what needs to happen. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm with you on Carry On Johnson. I also think uh, Jared Sims got to make sure he's not flustered and, uh, <laughs> and does the right things uh, when the, there is pressure coming um, from all sides. Uh, I mean, you don't want a repeat of the Clemson game. You do not want that. Defensively, J- 
Jeff Holland. If, he, if he's making Jalen Hurts uh, throw some bad passes, that's a good day for good thing for Auburn. Yeah, and he was, you know, it'll be interesting to see if that uh, whatever leg injury he had will slow him up at all. Right. Um, he, cause he looked a little bit <laughs> slow, gets ULM. I mean, they were doubling him, but still. Um, yeah, and, you know, he hasn't been mentioned on the injury report, but he did go down, so, I mean, it's possible it could have some lingering uh, it's possible, effects. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, prediction time. What are you thinking? I mean, we turned in our predictions already. They're up at uh, AuburnUndercover.com. Uh, sometime Thursday on Thanksgiving days. And uh, we're predicting the Iron Bowl, of course, also other SEC games and games across the nation in this rivalry weekend. Uh, what you got for the Iron Bowl? I'm looking at my final score, what I put. Uh, I think I uh, – let's see what I did. What did I put? Alabama 31, Auburn 24. I think Jalen Hurts has a big day and that uh, that determines the outcome. But crazy things have happened at, at – uh, in this uh, rivalry, especially in Auburn, and, um, and I admit, I think it could tilt the other way easily, but I, I just have a sense that this will be Jalen Hurts' day. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just read a tweet at me. It was pretty good. Um, yeah, uh, I go see it going either way. I know I said like a week and a half ago, Auburn would win by 10 points. That game was played that day, which, of course, can't happen. Right. Uh, but uh, I'm going with Auburn 31 or excuse me, <clears throat> that was your score, flip-flop. I'm going with Auburn 27, Alabama 20. Mm. I think it's going to be a relatively low-scoring game, and Auburn just has one more touchdown than uh, Alabama. A couple field goals in there for each team uh, for the defenses stepping up. But I think Auburn will be able to do enough uh, to knock off Alabama, go to the SEC championship game. Um, I just think this Auburn team is riding – Hi, they're hot right now, and Alabama really hasn't played a tough opponent this year. They really haven't. I mean, they, who, who do, I mean, who's their top, what, Mississippi State? Well, they did play Florida State when their quarterback was healthy for like a half. Well, their offensive line made sure he was not healthy, and there's a reason why Florida State's still not good. It's not necessarily their quarterback. It's that horrible offensive line. So Alabama has wins over Florida State. <laughs> beat Mississippi sixty six to three. <laughs> jeez, <laughs> Almost, jeez. Yeah. Uh Texas A M, same as Auburn. Yeah. LSU. Mississippi State. They killed Mercer. They Mercer was a tough Mercer. team. Yeah. Mercer's a really tough team, especially when you turn the ball over five yeah. times on them. Well, you know what's interesting? I've been kind of looking at it. It seems like Alabama, you know, people kind of question their resume, but their production and what they've been able to do, pretty impressive. Oh, yeah, certainly. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. I mean, uh, they they are statistically just wiping the floor with teams in most uh, most games. So, Well, it's incredible, you know, both these teams entering enter this game as the two highest-scoring offenses in the SEC since 2008, since Florida, yeah. since Florida and Tim Tebow. That's crazy. But it also probably tells you a little bit, one, about the talent that Auburn and Alabama have. But two, maybe how down the SEC is this season. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, Alabama, geez, Alabama's defense is the top three in everything. We have passing defense, top two rushing defense, yeah. top scoring defense by three full, full points. Uh, they've only had 13 touchdowns this season. Yeah. Nick Saban, in all his years at Alabama, has never lost a game by more than 14 points. That's nuts. It's nuts. And that's like two or three games. <laughs> There are 14 points. The rest that's have that. been one possession um, games. But it just sense. feels like a game that could go either way, that it's like sure. one one play. And you know, maybe it, maybe we'll all be wrong and it'll be a blowout for somebody, but like the Georgia game was. But it just feels like a game that one or two plays could decide it uh, for either team, really. Throw out the records, Mike. It's the Iron no, Bowl. I, I think you keep the records because they're good teams. Uh, <laughs> um, and it should be a fun atmosphere. Uh, it should be. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. Uh, yeah. It's going to be nuts. And I'll be sitting in traffic probably for three hours trying to get to the game. So what's your prediction? Do If the Auburn wins the coin toss, do they defer or do they take the ball? They take the ball. You think so? I think they take it this week. They took it against uh, ULM, right? So, they did. They did. They finally did. They usually defer. Uh, maybe they'll take it this week if they win it. I did a story on that for Auburn Undercover, 
And do you want to on so eleven opening drives, their scoring percentage eighty one percent. Dang. Five touchdowns, four field goals. Okay. And one one missed field goal. Right. So, yeah. Plus yeah. ten of eleven. So pretty. Yeah, they went nine plays, eighty yards uh, last week. So yeah, that's pretty impressive. They've been really good to open games. Defense has two though too. So. Right. Yep. Be interesting. All right, final segment. Uh, it's Thanksgiving, or it was Thanksgiving, depending on when you're listening to this. What are you thankful for, Mike? Oh, the kiddos, even though they get us sick every single week. I love them. That's nice. Yeah. When they develop a new virus, and right. it's resistant <laughs> to, to uh Talk penicillin. to me again in two weeks when I haven't left the bed. Uh, and then maybe, maybe my answer will change, but it's still the same. Yeah. Brandon, yeah. yourself? Uh, I, I, I'm thankful for uh, uh, my wife. She's good. That's good. <laughs> I love her. Uh, Amanda, if you're listening, I love you. I've never told you. I've never said I love her to her before. Oh, that's that's the first time. Um, Tender moment. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm thankful I get to cover games like this Iron Bowl. Oh. You know? Good one. It's, it's a huge game. We're lucky to be able to cover huge games like this. Yeah. Uh, 2013, my first season here at Auburn. Uh, I didn't really quite appreciate it um, because it, everything was happening so fast. You know, every other week it was a miracle play or this or that. Well, and and you I, can't predict an iconic moment. Before, no. You know, it's a, that, that you have to look, you look back on it and you say, holy cow, you know, you were there. But yeah, um, it, it that that season didn't quite hit me until the uh, day after at like two in the morning after the national championship game in the Chicago O'Hare airport as we're sleeping in cots waiting for a 6 a.m. flight. And I was like, wow, what a freaking year. And my body literally like fell apart after that. Yeah. Because no sleep that season. It was a crazy year. Anyway. So anyway, that's what I'm thankful for. Love love my wife, supportive wife, and uh, get to cover huge games like this. It helps break up the monotony sometimes when you're banging your head against the wall sometimes with work and trying to get human beings to speak to you like they're human beings yeah it's very true yeah so there you go everybody i hope you have a happy thanksgiving or had a happy thanksgiving i hope you uh filled up on turkey i'm looking forward to filling up on turkey playing games and getting to watch uh, the egg bowl on a thursday night in the sec there's a lot of hatred in that rivalry right now a lot of people pointing to a lot of Ole Miss fans pointing to mississippi state for the reason why hugh mm. freeze has been fired so there's gonna be a lot of a lot of fire in that game Thanksgiving night. It'll be fun to watch. So yeah. <clears throat> anyway, Could be some interesting. Where is that game being played? Is it at Ole Miss or? I uh, I think Stark. No, it's Starkful because uh, a friend of mine was talking about how they're keeping things open on Thanksgiving night. Uh, oh, okay. In all, in, uh, excuse me, uh, in Starkful. So yeah, it's got to be Starkful. Starkful. Could be some interesting ch- chance in that game. <laughs> 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 We have to have that bleep button ready. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, everybody, uh, thanks for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving. And make sure to go we have donuts.com. Uh, proud sponsor of the Auburn Undercover Podcast. We'll catch you at the Iron Bowl Saturday, 2.30 p.m. Central Time on CBS. It's going to be a fun one. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>